The development of nuclear energy has been plagued by many accidents. Some of them could be described as minor difficulties, while others fully deserve their place among the worst man-made disasters humanity has ever experienced. The severity of a nuclear accident is measured according to the INES, or the International Nuclear and Radiological Event Scale, established in 1990 by the International Atomic Energy Agency. Although the INES is far from perfect representation of the seriousness of the situation at the time it is happening. An INES rating is assigned after the accident has occurred, and in most cases has been dealt with. One of the reasons for it is a genuine lack of information. Right after a major disaster strikes, no one really knows exactly what is happening. A full picture of the damage and destruction is unavailable. The other reason is that there is no central body to manage the rating. Because of that, incidents may be assigned a rating by a facility operator, high-level scientific authority or even single experts. There are 8 levels on the INES scale. Level 0, or deviation, is assigned to minor anomalies without safety significance. The most serious nuclear accidents are rated level 7, or major disaster. The Fukushima and Chernobyl disasters are the only two level 7 events to date. Lucens Vard, Switzerland, 1969, INES level 5. The construction of the Lucens reactor began in 1962. It was a small Swiss-designed carbon dioxide gas-cooled pilot reactor built in an underground cavern. Moderated with heavy water and fueled by uranium, it had an output of 30 megawatts of heat, which was used to generate over 8 megawatts of electricity. In comparison, the Kashiwazaki Kariwa nuclear power station in Japan houses seven nuclear reactors, five of them with an output of 1,067 megawatts each and two generating 1,315 megawatts each. It just goes to show that even such a small reactor as the one in Lucens certainly has the capability to cause serious damage. On January 21st, 1969, the reactor suffered a loss of coolant accident during a startup. This led to a partial core meltdown and a massive contamination of the cavern. None of the people working on the reactor were irradiated, and the contamination was contained inside the cavern, which was then sealed encasing the nuclear contamination in the underground cavern. This is called nuclear entombment. The cavern was later decontaminated and the reactor dismantled. Three Mile Island, United States, 1979, INES Level 5. This is considered to be the most serious civilian nuclear accident in the United States. On March 28, 1979, one of the elements of the power plant system malfunctioned, initiating a chain of events that could have led to much more serious consequences. The element was a relief valve. The valve was opened following the increase in the primary loop pressure, this increase being caused by some other valves being closed for routine maintenance. The relief valve was supposed to close automatically after excess pressure had been released, but it didn't. As a result, a large amount of the reactor coolant escaped. Even though it sounds serious, in normal conditions the loss of coolant does not necessarily have to lead to a rapid deterioration of the situation. When managed properly, and if both the emergency system and personnel operate as they are supposed to, it's not going to unavoidably result in a meltdown. During the Three Mile Island incident, some serious errors were made. The personnel operating the reactor were not trained properly, and some control indicators were showing ambiguous information. There was much confusion as to what was actually going on. The crisis was eventually contained, but not before 2.5 million curies of radioactive gases and about 15 curies of iodine-131 had been released into the environment. The accident significantly raised the resistance to nuclear energy among the general population and strengthened the anti-nuclear movement in the United States. The cleanup effort was officially completed in 1993 at a total cost of $1 billion. Kaishtim, Russia, former Soviet Union, 1957, INS Level 6. During the Cold War, many cities in the Soviet Union were known as closed cities. Some of these places were off limits not only to foreigners, but for outsiders in general. Others were only inaccessible for foreigners, while the Soviet citizens normally living on the outside could enter. Back then, even the Russians living inside the Russian SFSR needed special permits to move around the country. The closed cities were not marked on any maps and there were no road signs to point you in the right direction. What was the purpose of such cities? Some were in bordered areas and were closed simply for general security purposes, but some cities have strategically important facilities. For example, 
Perm was a centre for tank production, others were important scientific centres or were associated with the production of nuclear weapons or other military projects. There are still close cities in Russia today, 42 that we know of and probably more that we do not. The Kaishtim disaster occurred in one of such towns, Ozyorsk. As a closed town, it was not marked on any maps, so the disaster was named after the nearest city that was Kaishtim. Ozyorsk was home to the Mayak plant, a large facility housing a plutonium production plant and processing facility. The plant was built in 1948 to make plutonium for nuclear weapons. At that time, Soviets were lagging behind the United States in the field of nuclear weapons, and they were desperately trying to close the gap. Since the Soviet authorities did not care about the environment or the people living around the facilities, the health concerns were irrelevant. The facility kept dumping irradiated water and radioactive waste into nearby lakes and streams. That waste was eventually reaching the Arctic Ocean, through the waters of the River Ob. Some years after the original construction of the Mayak plant was completed, the storage tanks for dissolved radioactive waste were built. Since the waste was heating itself through decay heat, a cooling system had to be installed. On September 29th, 1957, the cooling system for one of the tanks storing many tons of liquid nuclear waste malfunctioned, leading to the evaporation and eventually the explosion of the dried waste, which was mostly ammonium nitrate. The explosion had an equal force of 70 to 100 tons of TNT. Although nobody was killed directly by the explosion, it released a massive radioactive cloud. The cloud contaminated an area of over 7,000 square miles. At least 200 people died due to direct exposure to radiation, and 10,000 people were evacuated. In total, 470,000 people were exposed to radiation, and the Soviet Health Ministry found that over 8,000 people had died within the preceding 32 years as a result of the disaster. But of course, the accident was kept secret by the Soviet authorities. Only in 1976, the real extent of the disaster was made public. The CIA also kept quiet about it, presumably to avoid arousing public fears of the nuclear energy in the United States. Fukushima, Japan, 2011, INS Level 7. On March 11, 2011, an earthquake with a magnitude of 9.0 struck off the coast of Japan. The resulting tsunami, which was 49 feet tall, hit the Fukushima nuclear power plant 51, flooding the entire area and destroying or damaging electrical lines, generators and pumps. As a result of this damage, Reactor 1, 2 and 3 experienced a full meltdown. The full extent of the damage is still not known today. It's certainly too soon to even estimate the total impact on people and the environment. Even though this is number two of the most serious nuclear disasters, it may well become number one in the future. Chernobyl, Ukraine, former Soviet Union, 1986, INS Level 7. On April 26, 1983, a series of events led to the explosion of the reactor number 4 at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The resulting fire of the graphite moderator sent huge plumes of heavily radioactive smoke into the air, and it eventually contaminated over 38,000 square miles of land, which is now Ukraine, Belarus and Russia. The accident was caused by the faulty design of the reactor and a series of errors by the reactor's operators. There is no agreement as to how many people have died as a result of this disaster, but most estimates place the number of casualties at 5,000 to 6,000. But around 100 people were killed in the initial aftermath of the accident. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with my weekly videos. Also, don't forget to keep in touch on all my social media sites. The links are down below. See you next time.